G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with part two of the Z4 challenge. Now if you haven't watched the Dragon Trail round, round one of this FIA uh, exhibition manufacturer series, I suggest you go and watch that because that detailed the very, very uh, tumultuous tale that was driving the BMW Z4 GT3 for the first time. Now that I know what this car is capable of, or much rather incapable of, I'm going into this round with a much more realistic expectation of what will happen. Uh, but I'm not really going to share that with you right here, because it all kind of brings either... Well, it'll bring some... Uh, some feelings that maybe you don't want at the start of this video. You want the feelings at the end, give you a reason to watch. But here we go, out for qualifying at the uh, Sardinia Road Track C in reverse. That's the track we're on today, in Group 3 of course. We've come out in the qualifying session behind Captain Muffet, and that was very good because he was displaying some very good pace in, uh, in, the, practice, uh, in the practice races and practice qualifying for this event. So it's good that we've got some slipstream off him, and my goodness, do we need the slipstream. But coming into turn one, unfortunately, my first lap with the slipstream, a little bit deep, um, but we kind of recover, I guess, but I think Captain Muffin is a lot closer to that uh, Renault Sport RS01 than we are to the back of Captain Muffin. So he just streaks away, breaks the slipstream. I've got nothing. I've got no straight line speed in this Z4, so I'm not really able to stick with him too much. I mean, we may be just in the edge of the slipstream, but I don't think we are at this particular stage now. So we've definitely, or this first qualifying lap is definitely going to be slower than all of these cars up ahead, which is not a good start for this qualifying session. A couple of people have gone across the line. They've dipped into the 51s, and then Asahi now goes in the 51.4. Myself at 52. Point three essentially but luckily now tire wear is off along with the fuel in these qualifying sessions as we get turn one nailed a little bit better that time a little short shift up to second to get the car settled for the exit but yeah luckily the all, all the tire wear is off the fuel is off with which now means we can just go hammer and tong just straight out of the pits you can see we're a tenth down on that particular sector split which is the only sector split that's halfway through the lap so the uh, not having slipstream down the main straight at the start of that lap means it's got to be really difficult now to try and better that time of 52.3 so that lap was no improvement and then on the following lap we just exceed the track limits on the exit of the final corner and get ourselves a half second penalty but yeah, there's still plenty of time here because yeah, we can just go absolutely flat out one lap after the other because there's no tyre wear kicking in, which is absolutely beautiful. So we have to cancel back to the pits. We still have enough time to get out of the pits, go for an out lap and then one more hot lap. We've got to make sure we don't get in the way of these cars behind, but we've run it deep into the, into the turn one there. The cars behind are just going to pick up a nice toe. I don't want to get in their way, so I just kind of get out of the way here. So that Porsche goes past and try and stay out of the way here. And then on the exit, there's another car coming through. I think we just about managed to get out of the way in essentially what was probably the best possible way at that part of the track. Luckily for us now, we've got the slipstream off the back of this RS01 because I needed slipstream for this last lap. There was absolutely no way I was going to be able to better this 52.3 on my own. It was going to be really difficult. So we've got the slipstream of the Renault. Going to make sure we break a little bit earlier this time. A little bit of a Porsche on the apex there and I've run it deep again. So I'm really just not getting the handle of the car into that corner on uh, in the slipstream such a difficult corner too and it was really the bane of my existence at this track because it's got like a really awkward braking zone you dip into the pit exit to widen up the corner I mean, it, it's kind of you've got to start braking pretty much the second that you move uh, the second that you move into the pit exit area so the car's really unsettled and sliding and then you've got to try and get it in for an apex it's like really far away from where you turn in not a traditional corner that is for sure and then it drops away on the apex it feels like you've gone in early but then you wash wide on the exit the track dips away it's a really shocking corner and as you can see through that lap i was not able to stick with the renault and it's no improvement once again, so unfortunately for us, 52.3 is the best we can muster. It's like a 52.2 there, technically. <sighs> don't know what else I expected. Oh, I don't know. 
absolute joke this round is. Yeah, obviously not happy overall with that. The best I could have hoped for was probably a 51.9. So I really could achieved, could have achieved no better than 14th and a low 9 would have been hard. So I'm really not that far off where I was, where I thought I'd qualify at best anyway. But let's just enjoy the manufacturer's introduction. The manufacturer's introduction, it's about the only thing that I could enjoy on this round. I just, this is the second round in the Z4, and I just, I still cannot click with it. I don't know what it is, I just can't drive it, I can't get the pace out of it, and look, I've qualified 19th, I mean, it's embarrassing. This is not what I want to be showing. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be one of those content creators that's at the back that's not giving you know the viewers a good a good view of what's going on but you know, I guess we all have these rounds we get a really good start though it's something we can uh, clutch some straws at I think the Z4 is good off a standing start I think that's about the only thing it's a bloody good at so we get a couple of positions off the start there almost looking up the inside of these uh, Toyota Supra that's on the Supreme outside but he gets the power down much better and has the inside for this turn two now so he retakes 15th we're up into 16th from 19th so I guess it could have been a worse start gonna be really careful off the start because everyone's washing wide with cold tires there's an Aston Martin off there's a Nissan off up there I think there's a Renault Sport almost off and Captain Muffin was off in his Peugeot this Aston Martin gets a little bit sideways ways after contact with me and the Toyota Supra is coming back around the outside of turn seven so a little bit of a chaotic opening lap here and we up into 13th we get a bump from behind we definitely broke a bit too early for that last corner there so sorry to John for doing that but we're right in the thick of the battle here and we do something unexpected we dart over into the pit lane and pit at the end of lap one so what the hell am I doing you might be sitting there sitting there asking me, sitting there wondering for yourself, what are you doing, mate? You didn't even change tyres either. No, I didn't change tyres because the strategy for this race is a little bit different. It's not something we're used to in FIA. We've seen it a bit in the daily races recently, but we have not seen it in an FIA race yet. The strategy for this race, there is one mandatory pit stop, but there's no uh, required tyre. In fact, there's only one tyre compound available for this race, and it's the racing medium tyres. We do all our qualifying and all 30 laps of the race on the medium compound. And because there's no... Uh, because it's only a mandatory stop, not a mandatory tyre change, you can actually afford to do... To, do, to switch up your strategy a little bit. You can afford to do something a little bit funky. You can go into the pits whenever you like and skip the tyre change. Now, the tyre change only, only takes about two to three seconds, so some people will pit around the halfway mark and choose to take tyres. But myself in this race, I couldn't drive this car in slipstream. I can barely drive, drive it in clear air. You can see I've already made a position up there. Somebody has pitted at the end of lap two, and I'm up into 17th so far so I can barely drive this car in clear air let alone in slipstream so I knew that to give myself the best chance I wanted to get out of all that battling get out of the dirty air get out of the carnage lap on my own try and get some consistent laps with the full you know full uh, full downforce full aero benefit of this car which is still not much to me and try and capitalize on all these people that are going to get stuck in the battle lose time you know you lose a lot of time in all that chaotic battling that's happening up up the road a bit lose some time and come and you know fall backwards within and then put myself within their pit window which means that when they do their mandatory stop they will come out behind me Hatsu's gone into the pits now we did make a couple of positions up on that opening lap so I do expect to stay ahead of some of these cars so these two cars that I've overtaken here are not really a massive surprise to me that I've come out ahead of them 
Just drive. That's all I've got to do. Just drive. That was my one job at this stage. Just drive. And I did just that up until lap 11. So there's a little bit of a hiatus in all the pit strategy. A uh, couple of really early stoppers, which is to be expected, and then a lot of people going in in the mid part of the race. So we're into at lap 11 out of 30 now. And because the lap is so short, you can kind of choose and afford to stretch your, your laps out a little bit. So, you know, you could pit around now and, you know, it's not you don't spend too much extra time. It's a lot of it's a big number of laps uh, if you don't evenly split your stint into 15 laps each. But in terms of time wise, you don't spend too much extra time on the tyres if you pit say lap 12 instead of 15. You only spend an extra three minutes on the set of tyres if you really think about it. But there's more people in the pit lane, and this is where the pit exit gets really awkward because I go to take the entry to turn one, but there's a car coming out of the pit, so I just have to swerve to the inside. Hatsu is there, and the Aston Martin who was going for a move, and it just got really awkward between us. And I'm I'm kind of glad that Hatsu didn't get caught out. I didn't yeah didn't get caught out too much by. Uh, by me making that very, very abrupt movement into the braking zone. It was either do that or run in and slam and smash straight into the back of Okayama driving his Hyundai Genesis. We're in 14th at this stage, so, we're, well, we were in 13th. We would have been in 13th, but Hatsu has pitted, caught up, and re overtaken us. So that's the position at the start of the race that's getting away from us. Okayama goes for a little bit of a send at, at the final turn, just sort of bumping me wide off the apex. I give him a little bit of a tap on the straight here, just like that. Just a little bit of a smack, essentially. I'm, I'm just expressing my frustration in that little bit of a move there. Coming into turn one, I think he just returns the serve, goes for the apex and just bundles me a little bit wide and then slams me wide for a second time. A couple of flashes of the headlights from me and a flash of the hazards from the Hyundai. So a little bit of an awkward exchange between Okayama. I think we were just both frustrated with each other. And, uh, but Okayama is probably going to get past any day of the week because this Z4 is an absolute piece of crap, really. I've got just no pace. I mean, I, I just don't... I'm, it's unfathomable to me how to get the pace out of this car. I'm trying. I just don't know what to do. You know, I've, I've been told just, just calm down with the car. Just, just relax with the car and let it do its thing. I'm trying. And this is the pace I've got. It's just... I don't get it. I don't get it because I can jump in the super and go a second quicker per lap, but then I get into this car and I've just got nothing. So it's just damage limitation these races in the Z4. If I can get around the 150 point, which is about almost 100 points shy of what I'd consider to be a good round, if, if I, even if I can get 150 points in the Z4, that's good to me. But I, I don't know what to do. I, I'm just I'm just at a complete loss with this car. It's just shocking. But we're getting into the middle stage of the race now. A few people have pitted and just come out ahead of us. And there's a little bit of a snake happening up the road a little bit. So that's people from way up the road that have pitted and gone a lot closer to me now. So I've kind of undercut them in a way. I've gotten myself a lot closer because they were all battling at the start of the race. But it just wasn't enough to try and get in front of them and just impede their race a little bit. A Toyota Supra pitted in from up ahead. And we just about got in front of them at the start of this lap. But... The problem now is that all these cars pitting it at about the halfway stage in the race are probably going to be taking fresh tyres. So they're going to have 15, 16, 17 laps fresher tyres than me. And I'm pretty sure this Toyota Supra is probably one of them. So now they've got a car advantage and a tyre advantage at this stage. So there's, there's really... I'm just left with nothing. I've got nothing to work with. My strategy that I decided to go for for this race was based off the fact that I probably would have found it really difficult to try and get some on-track overtakes done. So I tried to do it with the strategy and to give myself the best chance of that was to avoid all the chaos as much as possible, which means pitting at the end of lap one. And if you pit at the end of lap one, you may as well not take tires. Out of the slip already. Man, this is painful. You might as well not take tyres if you pit at the end of lap one because you're not going to make too many gains off having just one lap fresher tyres around here. We get up into 11th, so I think that was a Lexus that came out of the pits just behind us. So he's right behind us now, yeah, definitely right behind us. It's a bit of a question. I don't know whether he took tyres or not, but he 
very, very well could have pitting at about the halfway stage in the race. Because I think that's that's the alternate strategy. You can choose, you can have your pit stop whenever you like in this race, but you can choose to have it halfway so you get the boat, you get the best of both sets of tyres that you've got to take. But this this Lexus is right behind us, coming into the final sequence at the end of lap 18. We've got to try and get a really good slingshot down the straight. We kind of do that with a little bit of a downshift to first for some extra rotation to get the car pointed down the straight. But again, Z4 just has no straight line speed and the Lexus is easily going to outhaul me here. I don't defend this one because I want to try and minimise time loss. I want to try and stay as far up the front, it, uh, you know, as far ahead on the road as possible compared to these cars behind because if I get myself stuck in a fight with some of these cars, it'll just allow cars from further back behind me to eke themselves into the fight, e eke themselves into the fray, get slipstream off each other and just get closer and closer to me which will you know, make it more and more likely that they're going to get past me. So all through there, I stuck with the Lexus throughout this lap. I'm half a second behind him at this stage, which, mean, which means I've got the slipstream. I've got a car looking to go up the inside, but they pulled out and didn't have the tow. So crucially, they weren't able to get that done. As we run it a little bit deep into turn one, the car just wouldn't stop for me there. And that's the Porsche through. The car didn't stop then. I don't think I actually downshifted properly. I think that was my issue there. The car just didn't get the engine braking that you get from downshifting in the braking zone. So uh, yeah, I didn't quite slow down as efficiently as I needed to on that particular occasion. And that's the Porsche through. And I've got another car looking up the inside just straight away. I had the slipstream of the Porsche, but this Toyota FT1 just makes his way through. Uh, I don't know how, how I could have defended that. I don't know how that... Uh, FT1. That FT1 just must be really, really awesome through that fast right-hander of turn six at the top of the hill. But I've got Slipstream again, thankfully. So John Teeter's going to struggle to get his way through on this exact lap. I don't really expect to keep him behind for the remainder of the race, which is nine laps so far. We all run a little bit deep, but come back for a straighter apex. We get a much better run out of... Oh, dear. And that's the FT1 gone. There goes my Slipstream. Damn it. Like just how unlucky is that? I had a slipstream and they bit it. Which means that pretty much it, it took about a lap. John Tita caught up. I've tried to defend this one because we're getting to the closing stage of the race now. I'm like, oh, you know, what, whatever. I'm going to try and defend it. So we defend on the inside. John Tita gets a switch back, but he's got the outside for turn two. It'll be the inside for turn three and crucially the outside for this much more important turn four. He backs right out of that because going side by side through this high speed uphill chicane to turn four and five is not really what you want to do around this track. So I've managed to actually defend that position on that particular occasion. I get an absolutely shocking turn six. John takes full advantage of that, gets up the inside at turn seven, and yeah, gets just clean ahead. I'm going to have some slipstream for the straight as long as I don't make a hash at turn nine, the final turn. Get on the power as smoothly as I can, but the tyres are just letting go at this particular stage now. Cyclone Dan in that Lamborghini Huracan is looking down the inside, down the straight. I think John Teeter moved across to give him a little bit of slipstream. It moves back to the left to take a racing line, giving me the slipstream. However, the Huracan up the inside had a full overlap. I tried to kind of stick to his left-hand side as much as I can. But unfortunately for me, Cyclone Dan just, he just has the better car and probably the better tyres. And that fight now has got this Porsche really close behind me. I've still got six or seven laps to go at this stage, so I'm not really expecting to be able to defend from this Porsche. What I'm expecting to happen is the two cars ahead of me, because they're so much better, are going to drive away, break the slipstream, and then the Porsche is just going to slipstream clean past me because I've got no straight line speed in the clear air. So coming into the last couple of corners, we're going to have a look at the gap to Cyclone Dan to see if we get slipstream benefits. No, he gains about two, three, about two or three tenths just through that one corner. I'm defending to the inside for this Porsche because, you know, we've only got five laps to go, less than five minutes of racing remaining. I'm not sure whether I can defend this one, but looking down the inside, trying to defend from this Porsche there, the car just escapes me a little bit, so I have to go and go and catch the car and then come back to the corner. Porsche is able to hang it right around the outside of turn one, gets clean up the inside at turn two. There's nothing I can do. I've just got nothing in this car. I, I, I just, I don't get it. It's just so frustrating to me that I, I just cannot drive this car like everybody else seems to be able to drive it. He goes clean off the track, actually, there. We'll come back to the action now. 
Four wheels off the track. He's going to have filthy tyres coming into this last sequence, as demonstrated there. I'm able to actually get up the inside at the final turn. Because that Porsche has dirty tyres, there's now a penalty that's going to have to be served up ahead. So maybe there's some positions to just scrape at the end of this race. I'm defending to the inside. The Porsche is still going to probably have a little bit of dirty tyre effects coming down the straight into this braking for turn one but I'm going to push him to the outside as much as I possibly can and get it stopped on the apex much better this time Porsche just hits the back of me as I park it on the apex that is how you defend turn one and I'm able to keep this position so this is good I've just got to try and defend these positions for as long as possible impede the other cars as much as as much as possible to try and limit how far they can get up the road which hopefully should limit the amount of positions I lose it's a car that Oh dear, that's uh, Hatsu served the penalty and got shuffled four wheels off the road. So he's going to have dirty tyres coming through here and that was much later in the piece compared to where the Porsche went off. So hopefully his tyres should be a little bit dirtier as we head down into turn one. So Hatsu is down the straight, he's in that vent, uh, V12 Vantage which is very good in a straight line, but I'm hoping the dirty tyre effects mean I can kind of get a lot closer to him at turn one. I take the wide entry. Hatsu leaves the door open a lot, so he slid a little bit deeper than he'd like with the slightly dirty tyres. I get the power down. I actually got a move done. How did I do that? I actually got a legitimate slipstream move done at turn one. I actually did it. Like That's the first, first time I've done it in 23 minutes in this race. I've actually overtaken someone just by slipstreaming past them and outbreaking them. There's been a mistake at, at the fast right-hander. Hatsu drops behind another couple of cars there. So we're up into 14th at this stage, which are, with only three laps remaining and a nine-tenths gap. We've got to be really careful not to get let those cars behind in the slipstream. The FT1's lost it on the exit there. Well, he's gone. Everyone's tyres are gone, I think. Maybe I have a chance at this position, 14th. Hatsu, 1.2 seconds behind me at this stage, and I'm thinking at this stage, I mean, you heard me in that live radio there, that I'm thinking everyone's tyres behind have kind of dropped off. I think maybe there's some other, uh, I'm, I was going to say no stoppers, but they would have had to stop, but I'm thinking they didn't take tyres. And I was actually able to keep them out of the slipstream range, and we're going to meet back with the action here on the start, or, or in the end of lap 29. So coming on to the final lap, it's really crucial at this point that I don't let Hatsu in the slipstream down this straight, so I have to get a really good final turn. And I actually do first gear for rotation, second gear, and launch it off the corner as early as I possibly can. Hatsu is eight tenths behind. He's going to drive into the slipstream range about halfway down the straight, but that means he's only going to get slipstream benefits for half the straight. So it's really, really important that I was able to do that because that gave me the best possible chance of trying to defend this position to keep Hatsu as far away from the back of me as possible to try and keep this position. He's going to get a good run out of the final turn heading up to the line, which is more than halfway down the straight on this particular course. So I have to be really, really clinical, really accurate in the inputs and the driving on this lap is trying to get the car around the last few turns as smooth as possible and just try and maximize that gap to Hatsu because he's going to get the run off the corner he's going to get the slipstream up towards the finish line with that V12 Vantage versus the Z4 he's going to have a better straight line speed he doesn't get the best of exits out of the final turn but he's less than three tenths behind me I'm going to defend right to the inside to get the minimum distance to the line as possible he pulls out to the outside but the line comes up soon enough and I managed to just scrape 14th position in this race I just that car gives me nothing I've got that car gives me nothing to work with I, I can just get nothing out of it it just feels like I'm driving it an empty shell so difficult so humiliating so a little bit of disappointment there it's just another case 142 points there I mean that's the amount we got in the first slot of the Dragon Trail race and well I did a couple more slots for that because I wasn't satisfied with 140 and look how that turned out. So I, I actually kept 140, I didn't go again and the round was crap anyway. I hated the track, I hated the car, I didn't even want to do the one slot but I needed points on the board for this Z4 challenge that we're doing. But yeah, that's the round but I just, it's just another case. I just don't know how to get the pace out of the car, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I can jump in the Supra and immediately go a second a lap quicker. I can smoothly and confidently drive the Supra. We saw it at Maggiore last season. I was able to bring home second position and 280 points. 
but just in this Z4, I'm just, I'm back into a corner. I don't know what to do. And it's really, the more and more I drive this Z4, the more and more it's looking like I'm going to be the one doing this five laps of Nürburgring or whatever it is in the Samba bus. And I'm also beginning to think at this stage I should just take the hard L and uh, just do the, just accept that I'm going to do the laps and not even bother with this Z4 because this is truly, this has truly been one of the worst decisions I've made in, in this game in my whole career. It's just... A disaster. I don't know what I don't know what they've done to the Z4. It's just an absolute atrocity to drive, and I, I just can't do it. I don't know what to do. We have a tuning round coming up at Willow Springs. I'm hoping, hoping there's some tune out there that I can get my hands on that brings the Z4 back up to pace. But uh, I don't know. I'm just. It's just so demotivating and humiliating, embarrassing. Just all those kinds of words, those kind of synonyms. And anything negative is what I'm feeling towards this Z4. But, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to end the video. I'm just going to ramble on about how much I hate everything. So, in that case, do hit the like button if you somehow enjoyed that video. And do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and streams from me. Do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments, and constructive criticism, as always, very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So, once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.